Hello everybody. My name is Kanan Panchal. Today we shall understand the concept of emulsions. So let's begin. In this video, we shall understand what an emulsion is, what are its uses in a pharmaceutical setup, which are the different types of emulsion. So an emulsion is nothing but a dispersion, okay? A dispersion of what? It's a dispersion of two immiscible or partially miscible liquid phases. So one of the phase is dispersed as globules and it is called as the dispersed phase. And the other uh, phase, which is again a liquid, is the continuous phase. Now, the dispersed phase uh, present in the continuous phase is stabilized by presence of emulsifying agents, also known as emulsifiers. So conventionally, the immiscible liquids are oil and water. That is one liquid is non-polar, such as an oil or a lipid in a liquid state. And the other one is polar, that is water, or it can also be an uh, aqueous solution containing some buffer. But for simplicity, the terms which we use is oil phase and water phase. Now, emulsions are thermodynamically unstable system. Because the phases are not miscible with each other, there is some energy which resists it, okay? The energy which tends to separate the water and the oil phases. So because of that, they are thermodynamically unstable. Now, the oil, there are two types of emulsion, basically, uh, oil and water emulsion. Now in this, the dispersed phase is oil that is oil globules or oil droplets are dispersed in the continuous phase water. And the other is water in oil emulsion. So as you guessed it correctly, in this the water uh, phase or the water droplet is dispersed in the oil phase. So now oil in water is represented as O by W and water in oil is represented as W by O. So now you might be wondering that why is an emulsion used? Why isn't a drug simply solubilized in water and administered? Or why isn't it given in a solid dosage form? This is because certain drug molecules, most of the drug molecules for that say, are water insoluble or their solubility in water is very poor and they are on the contrary they are very much soluble in uh, hydrophobic phases such as the oil phase so in these cases the drug is first solubilized in the oil phase and then this oil phase is dispersed in the water phase so this is the reason why an oil in water uh, type of formulation is made and this is an oil in water emulsion so this is the very basic approach why are emulsions made now you might be wondering that this is only for an oil soluble drug but then why do we make water in oil type of emulsions now in a water in oil emulsion, the water phase is dispersed in the oil phase, right? So the, you, you have something like this. You have the water droplet, which is surrounded by the oil phase. So now here, when your uh, water in oil type of emulsion enters the GI tract, in GI tract also, there is uh, the GI tract is also composed of aqueous environment, right? 
So again, the GI components are aqueous. So in this case, what will happen that the water soluble drug will first have to partition in the oil phase. Okay, it will partition in the oil phase. And again, from the oil phase, it will have to partition into the aqueous GI environment. And then it will get absorbed okay into systemic circulation into your so now this is your blood vessel right it will get absorbed into your blood vessel so why is this approach uh, chosen this is chosen to uh, have a prolonged or sustained release action say if you directly have your uh, drug in a solution form okay it is all going to be aqueous and the drug is going to be completely directly going to be absorbed into your systemic circulation but to have a slow release sustained release for a prolonged time you can have this approach wherein the absorption of the drug will be slowed down because it has to partition twice first from water in the oil and then from oil in the aqueous environment again okay so this is one use so these are the two uses first why do we have oil in water and second is why do we have a water in oil type of emulsions now uh, these emulsions are again used for oral formulations okay and most of your oral formulations are oil in water type you also have water in oil type but generally it is this type oil in water type now uh, emulsions are also administered parenterally uh, parenterally say through iv route okay so most of your emulsions given through uh, iv route are oil in water type you cannot give a water in oil type this type cannot be given through iv route because the oil which is present in a higher um, amount will cause blocking of your of your veins and capillaries it will cause embolism so it is not safe you will always give an oil in water okay type of emulsion iv but if you have to give it through say subcutaneous route okay say subcutaneous route or uh, intramuscular route im route then you can give a water in oil emulsion okay then you can also you can give both oil in water also and water in oil emulsion so this is a potential mcq if you are asked which type of emulsion can be given through parenteral your answer will be oil in water okay because oil in water can be given in both the ways iv and sc and im but if you are specifically asked what emulsion is preferred to be given by a IM route or SC route, then you can select water and water in oil type of emulsion as your answer. So this is about the oral and parenteral formulations. Now coming to topical uh, formulations. So these include your creams, your lotions, ointments okay the moisturizers which you apply so these dermatological emulsions are usually water in oil type of emulsions you can also have the other way around but usually they are water in oil type of emulsion now emulsions can also be a source of nutrition to those who are unable to take food uh, via their uh, gi tract uh, in case of unconsciousness and all they can be uh, uh, injected intravenously with a lipidic oil in water type of emulsion right intravenous right so it can be uh, they can be administered an oil in water emulsion as a source of calories and essential fatty acids in certain conditions so emulsions can also be used as a source of nutrition now emulsions can also be used as a diagnostic imaging techniques uh, so in this the emulsions 
are incorporated with certain contrasting agents uh, and they are used in diagnostic imaging including x-rays of body organs or computed tomographies or MRI okay so these are examples of contrasting agents right here iodized salts bromodized for fluorocarbon oils you also have one more here you also have barium sulfate okay BSO4 barium sulfate as a contrasting agent and this is widely used so you see the wide application of emulsions hence it becomes a very important uh, kind of formulation in your pharmaceutical use So now let us discuss the different types of emulsions. So we've already encountered the two types that is oil in water type of emulsion and another one is water in oil type of emulsion, right? So here is an image. Okay, now this is water. This is oil. And the white part again it's oil and water so when the oil phase is dispersed as globules throughout an aqueous continuous phase that is water the system is called as an oil in water emulsion right so it will look something like this and the opposite is when water is dipped dispersed as globules in an oily continuous phase it becomes a water in oil kind of emulsion now what is a multiple emulsion now when this suppose say the oil in water emulsion is further dispersed into an oil medium it becomes an multiple emulsion let us see its image yeah so here we again have two types in multiple emulsion we have oil dispersed in water which is further dispersed in oil and then we have water which is dispersed in oil so first it becomes a water in oil emulsion and then it is again dispersed in water here again we have this first oil in water emulsion and it is further dispersed in oil so it looks something like this right water so it is this is actually this water is dispersed in oil and then it is further dispersed in water so this is wrong notation this is a water in oil in water type of emulsion and this is oil the white thing is oil and the blue one is water so this again becomes oil dispersed in water which is again dispersed in oil right so such an emulsion is uh, categorized as a multiple emulsion now most of the medicinal emulsions for oral administration are usually oil and water i told you all earlier okay so this is uh, most widely used and uh, such an oil and water type of emulsion will require a corresponding emulsifying agent that is it will require an oil and water kind of emulsifying agent most of your dermatological emulsions are water in oil emulsions but nowadays even water in oil emulsions are being used for oral uh, purpose to have a prolonged release action okay so the previous classification was based on the composition of oil and water right now the second type of classification is based on the size of the globules present in the continuous phase so based on that there are again two categories 
you have macro emulsions and you have nano emulsions. Now, as the name suggests, a macro emulsion is of a colloidal or a submicron size range and uh, the droplet or the globule size diameter is up to 500 nanometers. Whereas a nano emulsion has a diameter size of below 200 nanometers. So it is really very less. And because of such a small size, the nano emulsion appears clear and translucent. Okay, clear or translucent. Whereas your macro emulsions are milky white. They appear turbid. Now, most of you all might have prepared emulsions in your lab, right? So the ones which you've prepared in the lab using a mortar and pestle is a macro emulsion. A nano emulsion preparation usually requires uh, high end devices like a high, high pressure homogenizer, high shear homogenizer or colloidal mills. Okay. It cannot be prepared in a simple mortar and pestle. That much energy is not sufficient to break down the global size and stabilize it. Okay. You might have also heard about micro emulsions. Now, both micro and nano emulsions are clear and transparent, but they are structurally quite different. Micro emulsions is a misnomer and they are not actually emulsions. They are thermodynamically stable and single phase systems that form spontaneously. And what we've understood, an emulsion is a biphasic system, right? It has two phases which are immiscible with each other. Now, nano emulsions are thermodynamically unstable and it is composed of oil and water, the two uh, immiscible phases. It is unstable compared to the micro emulsion, but uh, compared to a macro emulsion, a nano emulsion is quite stable. Okay. So here we end the first part of emulsions. In the second part, we shall study about the different uh, formulation aspects, the different excipients used and the different methods of manufacturing and emulsion. So I'll see you in the second video. Thank you.